Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Yang Gang Objective. This is a weekly series where I break down our goals and what we need to do for not only our movement, but for our UBI candidates running for office. Now today I'm covering the New York 10th District election and we're talking about Jonathan Herzog's campaign and really what we can do to support him and what we need to do to help him win. First of all, I want to talk about the race itself because I've noticed something. I've noticed something big. I feel like we can actually win this election. We can win this race. There's a clear path that I see going forward that allows us to win this election. And it's, it's really important that we win because I feel like this will legitimize our not only our movement, but our, our, our UBI candidates running for office and will show people that we can do it and we have the, the chance and the ability to make UBI a possibility and that UBI can be something that you can run on and win. So really what I see in this election are three things. One, Sherry Nadler. You know he's the incumbent and he's the one that presumably everyone expects to win because you never see an incumbent lose. You never see an incumbent lose a race except for when AOC ran against her incumbent and, and beat him. But Jerry Nadler is the presumed winner of this race even though it's not even over yet and even though no one has voted yet, it's still, since he's an incumbent, it seems that he's the winner automatically. What I see here with Jerry Nadler is I feel like he's asleep at the wheel. He's driving the car down the highway but he's asleep at the wheel because he thinks his autopilot's got things under control. What he doesn't realize and what he doesn't understand is that Jonathan is a real challenger. He's a real threat to his campaign, to his re-election. And he hasn't really had a, a challenger for his position in a long time. It's usually just been him because he's been in office for a, for a while and he has been the, the re-elected uh, incumbent in that position for 20 plus years. So really, he's asleep at the wheel because I've noticed that he hasn't really been making an effort to appeal to voters hasn't really been making an effort to win his election his re-election i don't think that that he's been trying hard enough and it really shows because when you have this candidate jonathan herzog who clearly is the better candidate and has more policies that reflect what the people want and and really would help the people he's more of a challenge but the thing is i don't think jerry knows that because it seems like to me he's not giving any effort towards his re-election he's just letting things go he feels like he can win so he's asleep at the wheel He's not giving any effort because he feels like he's got the, the election in the bag. You know, he's got the win handed to him, which isn't the case because what Jared doesn't realize, Jonathan Herzog is a real challenger and he also has the backing of the Yang Gang. And as you know, the Yang Gang took Andrew Yang in 2020 and brought him to the top. We made Andrew Yang a top five candidate by the time he dropped when he probably shouldn't even been in, in the race past that point. And many people didn't expect Andrew to be in that race past that point. They thought he would be long gone, dropped out at like October, November. But he stayed in the race because of us. And now here we are with Andrew out. And I feel that the Yang Gang is not motivated like they were for the 2020 campaign. But here's the thing. We can still do this. We can still do this. I think that this is definitely a possibility. We need to treat every UBI candidate's election as if it's Andrew Yang running for, for the president of the United States. If we go right now, all of us, I'm talking everybody, like this is going to take not only me, not only you, but your friends, your family. It's going to take your Yang Gang family, your Yang Gang friends. Everybody in the Yang Gang is going to need to come together for this. This is going to take a lot of energy. And yes, I know that this is going to really hurt our energy levels. This is going to drain us of our energy, but it's necessary to win. Because like I said, this could motivate people to vote for UBI candidate. This could, this could legitimize our movement and the UBI uh, policy. So what we have to do, and what I've noticed, is Jerry Nadler is asleep at the wheel. He doesn't know what he's talking. He doesn't uh, really care enough about this election to try. He doesn't care to appeal to voters to make them want to vote for them. Uh, vote for him, I mean, he's not making an effort. And he's asleep at the wheel because he thinks he's already won the election. He thinks, oh, I already won my re-election because people like me. The people know my name and they vote for me anyway. I don't have to try at all. Like, I don't have to give any effort to try. That's not the case. And then with her, with, uh, his, with Jonathan's other opponent, Lindsay, she's a special case because she treats everybody that doesn't support her pretty badly. She acts like a child. She acts immature. She acts uh, unprofessional. You know, you're running for office and the way that she acts, it's not something you would expect from a candidate running or someone that would be in office. So what she does and what she has done is anybody that doesn't support her, anybody that's against her, she blocks. She even has Jonathan blocked and his staff blocked. And for some reason, she blocks people 
that don't support her. She'll unblock certain people, ask them questions about Jonathan's campaign in the DMs, and then leave it at that. So she clearly doesn't care about getting potential voters. She's too worried about Twitter. She's too focused on Twitter and the people that don't support her when she should be focusing on her campaign. So there's a clear uh, chance to take this election on our own. Because if you have, you have Jerry Nadler at Sleep at the Wheel thinking he's already won this election, and you have this Lindsay character who's worried about Twitter and worried about people that don't support her on going on Twitter and telling people to vote for Jonathan. She's worried about Jonathan as well and his staff. She has them blocked and clearly is acting unprofessional. So when you have someone that's too worried about Twitter and not worried enough about their campaign and you have another one who is not giving any effort, who is asleep at the wheel because he thinks he can win this election without doing any work because he's the incumbent then there's a clear path to victory. There's a clear path to, for us to swoop underneath and take this election right from underneath them. We have the opportunity to take this election from them without them even realizing. But like I said, Jonathan can't do it alone. He doesn't have the money like that, like the incumbent do or, or that Lindsay does. He doesn't have the support like they do, and he can't win alone. See, we're about we're, we're getting close to the final weeks of, of his campaign before the ballots are due. And this is going to be tough because... We have an incumbent and a woman who's supported by the Bernie Sanders people. So what we're going to have to do as a group, like I said, is come together as as one whole group, as everybody needs to come together as one. We have to put pour all of our energy. This is going to take a lot of energy in this campaign, because if we put all of our energy in the Jonathan's campaign, all of our money, all of our resources, there can be a victory. There can be a victory and we can legitimize our movement, legitimize our candidacies, and we can legitimize these grassroots UBI candidates. It's gonna take everybody. Energy on top of energy for everybody. What's gonna take from us specifically is we're gonna have to donate our money, of course. Donate as much money as you can to Jonathan. We have to really try to get him the money to be able to compete against these two other candidates. Not only that, we're gonna have the phone bank. Luckily for us, there's a, there's a pandemic going around and people aren't allowed outside in New York. So what we can do is take advantage of that by phone banking and text banking. Those are the key issues that need to be addressed. We're, I think, not doing so hot on phone banking and text banking because I don't think that he's getting enough support. This is my opinion. I'm not sure how much support he has, but I think that we could do better if the entire Yang gang took it seriously and helped out. You can phone bank and text bank from literally anywhere in the world. You don't have to be a United States citizen to phone bank or text bank. You can phone bank and text bank from wherever you live, internationally as well. So there's clearly enough uh, in, enough of a reason to phone bank and text bank, but I don't think we have the people to do it. I don't think he has the support to do it. I don't think he has the necessary resources to be able to reach these voters. But if we all chip in our, our money, we chip in our time through phone banking and text banking, we can win this election. Because here's the thing. Elections are won. Because a certain number of people decided to write your name down or they've decided to put a check mark next to your name. They decided to pick you. So really, when it comes time to run, people are only choosing Jerry Nyler because they know him as an incumbent. They know his name. They know him just based off of name recognition. They don't know what he stands for. But if we can get enough people to vote for Jonathan because they've researched him or they've found out about him, we can win. Because all it takes is someone checking the box that says Jonathan Herzog. That's how you win, and that's how elections are won. It's not about it's not about who spends the most money or who spends the most uh, resources. It's it really comes down to will people decide to put your your name on the list for their ballot. But if we put enough money and and time and effort into this election for Jonathan Herzog, we phone bank and we text bank, we can convince a number of people, a sizable number of people, to check Jonathan Herzog down on their ballot come the 23rd primary. And that is what we need to do, Yang Gang. That is the objective. The objective for this particular moment, this week and next week, our objective is to help Jonathan phone bank, text bank, and donate as much money as we can because if we can get the resources that he needs and the support he needs, there's no stopping us because like I said, there's a path forward in this election. There's a path forward for this campaign and for this movement. They're not ready for it. They're not expecting it. We just have to be there ready to fight back and ready to fight hard. And if we do that, Jonathan will win and Jonathan can succeed. So that's it. That's the objective. That's our goal. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in.
This is Dark Knight signing off. Oh, I almost forgot. Hashtag Herzog and Nadler debates. This is the final piece to our weekly objective. This is the final piece to our checklist for the week. Okay, Yang Gang, this is the hashtag that we need to spread on Twitter. This is the hashtag that we are going to use. This is the hashtag that Jonathan is using. This is the hashtag that we need to make popular. We need to get this trending on Twitter number one in the United States. If we, the Yang Gang, can do this and get this trending number one on the United States trends on Twitter, we will have to force the news media to cover it, which in turn will force Jerry Nadler to make a response to this and actually force him to accept the challenge that Jonathan has placed for a debate. The challenge that he has called for, the debate he has called for, will have to be accepted by Jerry Nadler if this hashtag gets trended number one in the United States and gets news media coverage. If we get the news media coverage, he'll have no choice but to accept. He cannot back down. This will force a debate and this will force a series of debates and will force the New York people of the 10th district to take a hard look at who they're supporting and who they're voting for. This will give Jonathan the chance to s explain his positions, his policies, and prove to the New York 10th district that he is the one that deserves to represent and deserves to be in Congress fighting for the people. They will have to make a decision based off of a debate. If a debate happens because we trend this hashtag number one in the United States on Twitter, the people of New York will have to make a choice because no longer will it be choosing the incumbent because of name recognition. If he has to debate for the first time ever in his position, this will cause people to have to pick a side. This will cause people to have to actually do research and actually take a look and take a stand on a position or a side of who to choose. So if this debate happens, People won't just choose the incumbent because they can. They'll actually have to take a hard look at who they're voting for and actually have to make a stand in a position. If this happens, we can win. All we need is for this final piece to our weekly objective to be successful. We need the Yang Gang on Twitter using this hashtag, using this trend, and getting it number one in the United States of America. Once that happens, once we do that, we can force a debate because the media will cover it. The media will cover this challenge for a debate. They will cover the story, and Jerry will have no choice but to accept. So if you would like to see a debate, if you'd like to see Jonathan have a real shot at differentiating himself from Jerry, then we need to trend this hashtag on Twitter, number one, United States of America. That's what we got to do. That's the final objective apart from what else we have to do, but that is the final item that we need to complete for this weekly objective. So let's do this, Yang Gang. Let's get it done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dark Knight signing off. I know how it feel to wake up, fucked up. Pockets broke as hell, another rock to sell. People look at you like you's the user, selling drugs to all the losers, mad Buddha abuser. But they don't know about your stress filled day. Baby on the way, mad bills to pay. That's why you drink Tangeray, so you can reminisce and wish you wasn't living so devilish.